BYD is a crypto exchange on desktop and mobile where you can spot trade, futures trade, use leverage tokens, and copy the trades of top traders. If you sign up with the link in the description, you get $300 when you deposit $100. There's hundreds of crypto available on their spot exchange, as well as a free test account so you can practice futures trading without getting wrecked. BYD Fi. Hello everybody, welcome back. Let's get started, shall we? At some of these uh, these charts, we'll do traditional markets first. I'm just on my AI stock at the moment. This is um, a bit of a derivatives trade I've got at the moment. Nothing more than a bounce though, uh, so let's not get too excited. I still think that stocks are about to uh, not crash, but just have a nice consolidation. That's all I'm looking for, but not immediately, I should say. Let's take it to the Dixie first. Um, and by the way, if you want to join the live streams, you can interact with me uh, Tuesdays and on um, Friday nights. Obviously, that means that there's one tonight. So there's links in the description below for the Patreon if you want to join that. Um, right, so here we go. So the first test of the trend line in a little while now. Uh, descending triangle of uh, of the Dixie. This is the daily. Not massively bullish as far as uh, breakouts are concerned. However, if we do clear this area, which is like 103.3 uh, and close above there, then we are pretty bullish on the Dixie and we'll be looking for moves all the way up to 105.3. So a nice big move out. As far as momentum is concerned, it's pretty sweet. It's pretty good. You know, it's not overheated, no bearish divergence, nothing like that. So to be fair, there is a good chance that maybe not on this first pass, maybe the next time round we do break it and we continue up from there. That's... Uh, that's only going to emphasize any sort of uh, pullback or downtrend or consolidation or whatever you want to call it for everybody else. Let's have a think about oil. So oil finally, uh, at the moment, getting a rejection again. So similar to the dollar, getting a rejection from this uh, this top area, this $83 zone. So this is good for, I suppose, in the very short term for everybody else. Uh, because I believe that um, the oil price is breaking above 83 It will be a problem for all. And just like the Dixie, it is building strength, and it probably is going to do it, but not maybe not on this first time round. This is a 10 exponential retest right now. It'd be very bullish if we see a bounce from there. I would be looking for a deeper dive back down into the upper 70s over the next couple of weeks, and that would be where I'd be looking to pick up some of this for the next run, at least back up to 83 and probably beyond, which is going to filter through to CPI pr um, uh, reads, which will give the uh, Fed and all central banks a headache as uh, inflation continues to rise again due to food and fuel and everything else which oil basically adds on to uh, it gets priced into one thing <coughs> excuse me that's not being priced into at the moment is the price of gold which is still going down probably a direct um uh, reflection of, of dollar strength at the moment. However, this is a pivotal area. I think this is a bit of a fake breakdown move at the moment. So far, uh, it's not closed below that uh, 200 simple moving average. Um, but it is, I suppose, toying with the idea of doing it. Now, I had a uh, position on this one. It's been stopped out. I am going to take another position if we dip down a little lower than this. To be fair, this is an appropriate position already to take right now for a bounce back up to its all-time high, but I'd like to see some form of bounce take place first, probably in the form of a wick, uh, an unreasonable wick that takes us down a little lower than where we springboard from. One flow index is pretty significantly low here on the daily. And if we take this over to the four hourly, we are just trending down in the form of a death cross. We've not had a uh, death cross retest yet, so and the momentum doesn't really show one way or another which way it really wants to continue in. If we take it to a weekly though, we can see that there is a 50 exponential moving average just below the $1,900 zone. So it's sitting nine, uh, 1800 and 97.58. So that would be an area I would imagine that a wick comes down to because we've not tested that in a little while now. The last time we did test it, had a very big springboard all the way up to this big new high. So gold is still uh, absolutely on the radar for an epic trade to take place pretty much immediately. Uh, and again, it's a derivatives trade, so it won't take long to know if you're wrong, so be careful when you take positions in this, because if it fails, it fails, and it'll fail uh, dramatically. Um, but these areas down here are appropriate, as far as I'm concerned, in, in trying to uh, take positions in it. Right, uh, S&P, and then we'll move to Bitcoin. So S&P here on the weekly, nothing special special and uh, isn't really curling over exactly just consolidation uh, we moved into a 50 simple moving average on the daily these last couple of days that's fair that's fair it's still a very bullish chart and um, the bearish divergence was cancelled and then we consolidated anyway got two drives of hidden bullish divergence on the way down no big deal and the four hourly is um struggling but trying to 
get back above all these areas over here. This to me does look like a, a breakout is more likely to, than a breakdown. Uh, we found a fair bit of support around this area, um, which again, it obviously is below major, major moving averages. Uh, slurring my words now. Uh, we could look at this in the form of a descending triangle, uh, and we'll be looking for this to break one way or another. So breakdowns, continuation of the of the downtrend, 4451. Uh, breakout would be above all major moving averages, 45. Right, that's that. So again, most things hanging in the balance, but I think the, the markets are going to have a little bit of an edge today for further upside based around the dollar rejection and the oil rejection. Now let's have a look at Bitcoin, shall we? What are you doing? So absolutely still basically sideways to the max. Had a it's not even a big move, but it had a move down a couple of days ago, had a move up yesterday, and now we're back down to square one. We're just in the tightest range possible. Uh, I mean, it's ridiculous, really. When you have all the moving averages squashed into one little area like this, basically it gives no edge, which is why you know I was saying yesterday, it doesn't matter who you listen to. That's a 10%, a 0.1% range that we're in at the moment. So it doesn't really matter who you uh, follow, who you listen to, me included or anybody, um, to give uh, you know an idea of which way this is going to go with all degrees of certainty is it's kind of impossible. The odds are in favour of further upside just based on everything else that I've explained today, that everything else does look like it's more likely to have a bounce and move up a little bit today, short term time frames. Um, that could move over to the higher term time frames because the daily is still relatively bullish. So low, high, higher low, higher high. We're looking for a higher low anywhere around these areas really, as low as potentially 27,100, uh, 27,700, 28,500. All of these are absolutely on the on, yeah, are perfectly acceptable areas to see a bounce and a back up to a new local high. Absolutely. Um, but is it going to do it? I mean, momentum isn't really convincing either way. Volume is absolutely minimal, so small. Um, but you know, the daily, the three-day, and the weekly do show uptrend, obviously. Um, but is it dwindling? Um, you know, there's nothing much more to say about Bitcoin that I haven't already said. In the short-term time frames, as you can already see over the last couple of days, you have a move down, bought up. You have a move up, sold off. You know, it doesn't really know which way it wants to go or is even capable of going in any direction. So it is more or less a 50-50 scenario in the short term time frames. Whichever direction it does go in, I don't think it's going to have enormous follow through anyway. So we might see a move up uh, and a breakout and that could take us into, you know, maybe even the upper 30,000s, maybe. And then that would probably be it. Recognizing that we do have uh, several drives of bearish divergence now on the three day, which is something to think about. You know, we've got high lower high, lower high, with every single move up. The, 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 you know, three drives is usually enough to expect a consolidation. So that, I suppose, is a concern, one that you have to think about. Same thing went on with the um, with the money flow index. Now, you know, when you see these sort of things in a higher term time frames, you should, you should, they, they should be, you know, you should look at them and, and accept them for what they are, really. We had the same thing going on over here, didn't we? One bearish divergence, two bearish divergence, three bearish divergence, four bearish divergence, and cow. Same thing really with the money flow index. One big one, another big divergence there uh, with the all-time highs. So it's not something to look at and go, nah, it's just a little bit of divergence or the free day. There's nothing really there. About it. it's, it's something that you have to consider, which is why I say, you know, as far as trend is concerned, it looks good. We've got golden cross, which signifies strength of trend. We've got bearish divergence unfortunately which also would signify downtrend and a pullback into an area of significance so I'm highlighting this area particularly as, as like the most interesting area but if it if it doesn't happen no big deal we break out I still don't think we've got an enormous amount of rallying to do before we do consolidate a bit more dramatically definitely because of the divergence on the three day anyway that is basically it crypto is a bit of a loose cannon it's the wild card at the moment um, but I still stand to uh, what I say uh, when it comes to the overall cycle. The cycle is uh, only just beginning uh, and the volume tells a good story, paints a, paints a nice picture of where you know the, the lows are likely to be in. Seems unreasonable to imagine lows lower than probably around 25,000. Uh, so any time we move down towards that or lower, probably, probably a good opportunity to pick some up. Because that's where the volume and the smart money started picking it up from. Anything above 25,000, it's your, it's your money, you do as you wish. But the volume basically dried up the moment we cracked that $25,000 zone. So until we uh, see you know, uh, these levels cleared and bases being built above this 32,000, 
you know, this is a no man's land. It's a little bit weak. Um, although the trend is good, it can still come down, but moves down towards 25,000 uh, is uh, absolutely a, a, a buying opportunity. Right, I'll leave it with you there. There's not much more to say than that. I'll make some videos potentially through the day on altcoins. Otherwise, I'll see you on the live stream tonight and you can ask me any question you want about any chart that you like. Right, thanks for watching. Take it easy.